election, election if those troops hadn't been there keeping the peace. Uh, possibly, but if, if we can leave the rights to one side for... for I, mean, I, I just want to go back on and say that I mean, it is absolutely not true. I, I have no doubt whatsoever it's not true. It's someone who spends a lot of time in Muslim communities, um, uh, which isn't true of your average spectator leader. I have no doubt whatsoever that 2% of Muslims in the UK do not support terrorist violence. That the number of Muslims in the UK who would support terrorist violence is, is tiny. I, I really don't, and 2% of Muslims in the UK, uh, you know, there are a million Muslims in the UK, so uh, you know, but there are not 20,000 terrorists in the UK, or, or people who actively support terrorism in the UK. And I, I really do think this kind of, of fear-mongering does nobody any good. Uh, and, and, contributes to this kind of spiral of distrust and hatred that can actually cause the problem that we're all trying to solve. And I, I really don't think that that kind of exaggeration does anyone any good. Well, Rahul, I mean, you yeah. mentioned the, the issue of the media, in a sense, never you know, painting the positive, always looking at the negative. It is what Craig's saying right, in a sense. It, does the media blow this out into sort well, of I, hatred? Well, I think I would definitely agree with that. I mean, if you were to ask a similar um, questions to the, to the general public, you have, you know, the, the far right and the BNP in this country. If you were to conduct a survey, you might have 1% of people, you know, within, you know, supporters of the BNP who might be advocating violence towards criminals, but nobody's actually conducted that survey. Oh, so the, that the, survey is conducted all, all, fairly regularly. All, all, um, all the time, it's, the focus is always upon the Muslim communities. And just because one percent of Muslims say they, you know, support that, of course, that's you know, n not good. But it doesn't mean that any of those people are going to go out and commit any of those kind of atrocities. You know, it's just at the end of the day, people responding to a survey. You know, the kind of extreme parties in the UK, like you know, Al Muhajirin, Al Garaba, they have a few hundred supporters. But you know, there's so much emphasis and focus put on them as if they represent the general Muslim population and communities, when it's a, you know, a tiny percentage of people, you know, e even optimistically, their, their figures would, you know, be about 300 people in the whole of the country, you know, and it doesn't mean that all of them are going to then commit kind of atrocities or anything like that. I d disagree with that. That's an unfair characterization to make the argument. I don't think anyone in the government, anyone out of a tiny extremist group of perhaps the BMP or someone, Nobody in government, nobody in politics, nobody I've ever read in the papers has suggested that Al Gharaba, for instance, a representative of the majority of Muslims or of all Muslims in this country. Nobody is making that suggestion. What does worry people, myself the, the included, media propaganda is often that, tries to imply that. But what I'm saying is that what does worry people like me very much is not just the fact that organizations like uh, Al Gharaba and things exist, but that within the wider Muslim community and in all of the major Muslim organizations in this country, like the Muslim Association of Britain, the Muslim Council of Britain, in these organizations, they're not advocating terrorism, but it's very hard to get them to roundly condemn terrorism. It's very hard, and in fact, you will not find a member of the MAB who will categorically state that suicide bombing in Israel is wrong. I mean, that's a completely different issue that we're looking at, but in terms of condemning atrocities in the UK, every single Muslim organization has like categorically condemned any, any of the violence that has taken place which case, tell, me why, place tell me why what is now a, a party with not just a seat in parliament but in, with council seats in this country, the respect party, which I think is just as, as vile and obnoxious as the BMP, equally extremist organization, that, that a senior member of the respect party could say on the record, a debate that I was in two weeks ago, that the 7-7 attacks were simply reprisal attacks. Now that well, doesn't say that she, that she thinks that they should happen again or it, but yeah, we don't I, really I, like I, that I language. Don't think, I don't think that they, in any how, I don't know who that was or whatever, but I, you know, I don't think that that would have been in the context of justification, but you have Sounds to... Sounds pretty close, I don't it? think so, I wouldn't agree with you there, but I think you have to smell the coffee, and the reality is that as a result of what's happening in Iraq, what's going on in Afghanistan, other places around the world, the injustice of... Palestine, what recently took place in Lebanon, you know, it's not a justification, but that is the reasons why the anger is there and why people feel that they can resort to these kind of measures. Now, at the end of the day, when we're using a language, war on terror, long war, war on this, war on that, you know, if we're saying that, you know, we are at war, then you can't make war and then make the rules to suit. Now, I don't justify... Well, I've never known anyone I don't, fight war I don't justify don't fight in like any way whatsoever. But the point I'm saying is that people are seeing there's no difference between a suicide bomber strapping explosives to himself and getting on the bus in the UK and a B-52 bomber or a helicopter gunship, you know, blowing up people in, in Iraq yeah, and Afghanistan. That's a very, very and great amount of difference. Well, for, for me, you know, terrorism is wrong, full stop, whether that is state terrorism or whether that is terrorism 
conducting that's conducted in the streets of Britain. All terrorism is, is wrong, and we can't, you know, pick and choose that we no, think that this, kind of, choose, this yeah. kind of state terrorism is okay. And you know, 650,000 people being slaughtered in Iraq, and we're saying that that is okay. First what are we not, saying? Not that the their correct, lives not the correct figure. Are, are, are secondly, we that their lives first are worth not the correct figure, and secondly, right, guys, not being not being killed. My dear, not being killed by the forces of this country or America. Don't you dare sl slur the armed forces of this country well, as if they have killed 650,000 people. The people being slaughtered in Iraq, our democratic allies and friends being slaughtered in Iraq, are being slaughtered by terrorists in Iraq, not by us. How many people do you think, the, how many civilians do you think the British and American armed forces have killed in Iraq? We have, we have no idea, but we believe ha, that in well, the okay. initial campaign, okay. we'd be talking about several thousand, and let's, then maybe, maybe let's, ten, uh, ten thousand. Let's move, <laughs> let's move back a little bit towards the yeah. We'll break up the uh, Rahul and Douglas show for a moment. Um, Craig, let's, yeah. looking at the survey itself, I mean, what's underlying it? I mean, that's, I think, one of the questions we would like to know. I mean, Rahul's independence survey, the different survey, the 1990 Trust survey, suggested that, in a sense, foreign policy is the leading determinant. Policy exchange have said it's actually multiculturalism. It's a failure to have integrated communities properly. It's a sense if you like, of distinctiveness that's actually mm. caused this division between people, led to radicalizing attitudes. Others have said, it, look, it's what's been taught in radical sort of madrasas or it, within the community itself, people not condemning, something similar to what Douglas said, people not condemning terror, etc. What strikes you as being the reason behind it? Um, well, I think all of the above. I mean, I mean, frankly, I think anyone who denies that all of those are factors uh, is stupid and, and is attempting to make a political point rather than genuinely understand the problem. The, uh, there's no doubt that you know, aggressive foreign policy, which involves invading Islamic countries, um, causes a tremendous feeling of resentment. Um, that's true. There's also no doubt that, the, uh, that there are people who have their own agenda to stoke up that resentment for their own reasons which are, which are not good, who have a terrorist agenda. They exist, and they're, they're, they're bad people. They need to be counted. They feed on it. But both exist. It's also true that we have tremendous social problems, particularly in our northern cities, where, um, and this is often government's fault, where schools and housing estates and all kinds of things have been able to become entirely segregated and, and ghettoized, uh, and, and that has to be tackled. Um, it's quite wrong to bl solely blame a Muslim community for that. It, 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 it's actually, often it's the Labour Party's fault, to be quite honest, who, who've controlled most of these cities uh, for many years and who deliberately wanted a segregated and separated uh, Muslim community as a useful vote bank for them. So all these things uh, play into each other. But the, uh, uh, the, um, what we've got to do is teach people to take those grievances. And I, I disagree with, with our foreign policy just as strongly as any any Muslim does, but teach them to channel that into political radicalization. I mean, political you're not to be radical, though, exactly. have you? Well, you can be radical without being violent. That's a key thing. They can be as radical as they want. There's nothing wrong with being radical. Uh, but, but to channel that into non-violent political activity, uh, and that seems to me the key thing we have to work on. I bind that, but Ruchel, I mean, one of the key issues is, leave aside the foreign policy side, it, the radicalization is occurring in terms of an increased sort of religious radicalization as well. People do, I perfectly take your point, Sharia law is very wide and very diverse, you've got obviously dietary requirements, very, many other things, but this sort of, this turning inwards, if you like, of the Muslim community, is that healthy, do you think? Well, well I think firstly, also on the point of Sharia law, you know, when maybe 2% of the country is Muslim, I don't know why we spend so much time. It's not a, how can it no, in I mean, any within, way be a threat to I, I, Britain? I'm, I'm talking know, about within the okay, community itself. So you was asking... I, I'm just saying with it, sort of the greater emphasis on keeping many more of the laws of Islam, for example, within the community, not, not trying to impose it on others. Well, I, well I think Muslim identity is something that has um, grown as a result of um, what's been happening in the media and since the bombings and so on and the kind of focus on Muslims a lot of young Muslims have been looking at their faith and looking at their identity and you know when you know um, the situation is where communities have been more marginalized, alienized, alienated, polarized and so on people will look internally and as a result of that you know people have uh, d you know many people have decided to kind of you know look into their faith and see what it's saying and, and, and so on. Is that what you was... Yes, I think, well, I mean, don't, has the West, if you like, Western liberalism driven British Muslims away? No, I mean, and, uh, it's uh, a typically absurd uh, Western point of view that, Western liberal uh, self-flagellating point of view that thinks, oh, it must be our fault. Uh, it must be something we've done. Well, um, if you look at a survey like the one that um, Policy Exchange has just published, you see a uh, Quite often, um, young Muslims in particular being polled, saying that they, for instance, uh, don't like the fact that people drink in British society. Well, so what? 
why, why do I care? Why should we care that a group of people say they don't like people getting drunk? So what? Go, you know, go somewhere else. If you don't like